Hi guys, welcome to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. In today's video, let's see if we can do some actual work on the iPad. I work in IT, but I will keep the tasks mostly general like email, playing with the files, a bit of Microsoft Office stuff, image manipulation, and use some fairly popular softwares which most companies use and see how it works on the iPad. Not to worry, I'm not going to run web servers or compile code as those things are better left for the PC and also fall outside the generic task list which most office workers tend to do. Also, I'm not going to use actual clients and projects for obvious reasons, but I will replace the same tasks which I do with dummy examples. So let's see how easy, difficult or messy these things get on the iPad. Also, I'm going to be fair and connect a keyboard and mouse to the iPad as I always use these accessories on my PC as well when working. And just before proceeding, please do subscribe to my channel guys as this will immensely help a new YouTuber like me. So the first task is to take a screenshot, mark it up and send it as an attachment via email. This is pretty straightforward. So hitting the home button and the power button takes the screenshot. If you have the pro, then you need to use the volume up key and the power button to take the same. And if you touch that preview, you get the options to mark up. At work, we usually use this to highlight the issues on a web page and send it off to the team for corrections. This bit is quite simple on the iPad. Next is sending the email. Again, pretty simple. Open the default mail app, type the email, hit that button to choose the screenshot so it gets attached to the email and then hit send. This is pretty simple actually and it is much more easier on the iPad than the PC. Because on PC, I usually use Photoshop or Fireworks to put the screenshot in, crop it, and then mark it up and then send it off to our team. Next task is save an image, rename it, make a zip file and attach that zip file to an email. Zip files are pretty popular in any work environments. So let's see how we can do this again. The files app makes it really simple. So you just go to an image, tap and hold choose copy or even use a share option to select the files app and paste it in there. And then when you tap on the image, it allows you to change the name of the image. Then you can use the select option to select multiple and then hit on the more button here, which gives you the option to compress. And when you choose that, it creates the zip file. Again, simple, you can just open the mail client via multitasking and then drag and drop the zip file onto that and just type your email and send it off. Pretty straightforward. Next, let's do some image manipulation. Resizing an image is not an option which the Photos app allows you. It allows you to crop, rotate and add filters, but not resize. You can use Photoshop to do this, but I'm using a free app called Image Size. This allows you to set the size of the canvas, import an image into that canvas and resize it as needed. Once it is done, you can simply save it to the Photos app and then via there you can share it or send it in an email. This really helps if you're playing with huge image file sizes and you want to resize it so that you can attach it in an email and send it off without the email getting rejected or picked up by spam because it contains a huge file size attached to it. Next, let's take on the mighty Microsoft Word. I use this application almost daily to send proposals training instructions and other documents. So let's try to create a proposal and see how easy slash difficult it is on the iPad. This is the first time I'm trying to use the Microsoft Word on my iPad guys, so please bear with me. So once you download and install, obviously you need a subscription or if you have already subscribed, you can sign in. The subscription costs about £5.99 per month and gives you the complete office suite. So first I'll open a blank document and uh, let's add a title. So that's the title. I just need to 
change the font size, make it bigger, make it bolder as well. There you go, that was pretty straightforward. Now let's get some sample text and go to Lorem Ipsum. If you haven't heard about this guys, Lorem Ipsum is actually gibberish text, which is available for everyone to use. We use this on documents as placeholder text if we don't have the actual text to go so that we can show it to the clients visually how the font and the layout looks. So again, by using multitasking side by side view, let me just copy some text and bring it into my Word document and paste. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's try to add an image and see how it works. So let's go to the insert tab. Now I can see these icons and I can kind of make out what they are, but it would be helpful if the icon's name is visible somehow. I mean, tapping and holding it is not really doing anything. So, all right, I know that that's picture because I use it on my PC as well. So I'll tap that and then it give you options to import an image. I'll choose it from my photos app and let's bring that image into the Word document. So the image is in here. I'll try to resize it. It's pretty neat. Actually, it's keeping the proportions when I try to resize the image. That's pretty neat. In Windows, usually you have to hold the shift key and do it. Otherwise, it kinds of messes up the image proportions and dimensions when you try to resize. Next, let me see if I can find the through option. Uh, yeah, it is there. So with this through option, you can wrap your text around the image. That's pretty neat, so I've done that. Now next, let me try to add a header and footer to my document. Again, the insert tab, and yeah, you have this option to add header and footer. Let me do that. Adding an image to the footer is slightly tricky. I mean, it's like that on the PC as well. You just need to get the right size of the image and then add it that way. And then, yeah, let's add some more text. Let's add a table next. And that's pretty much straightforward as well. So here's a table. Cool, now that's done. I'd mark it as the end of the document. Save it and then, yeah, off you go. So you can save it to anywhere. You can save it to your files app and then you can send it via an email as an attachment. So yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, there are a few limitations, obviously. Um, but it does work and it allows you to do most of the basic things which you do using Microsoft Word. Next, let's take on Excel. We use spreadsheets almost daily, so let's see how easy it is to edit the spreadsheets on an iPad. I have an email attachment with a few CSV files. So again, I'll hit the share icon and I can save it to my files app. Then I'll open it and it fires off the Microsoft Excel application. For some reason, it says that I have to make a copy in order to edit. Well, this is fine. So I'll just do that. And then I can now edit the spreadsheet. I always resize the columns so I can view the full text because usually the columns are condensed. So when you select a column, that option is there. You see this small little icon to the side, which indicates that you can drag and make the columns wider. And then from there, you can just, yeah, type, select, copy, paste. And you can do all those basic things. Now let's try and see if I can use some simple functions. I'll open this other spreadsheet. It's got values. So here, what I'll do is I'll try to run a simple sum function. So I'll type in the function equals sum. It gives me suggestions there. And I'll select the column and then there you go. That has calculated the total of that column, which is pretty neat. Now let's see if we can try something more complex. I use VLOOKUPs on Excel. So uh, let me try and see. I can't find a way to 
open two versions of Excel side by side so I can use VLOOKUP on both the files. I think this is more like a Microsoft restriction. And if they probably update it to the iPad OS, they might allow us to do that because Apple by default allows you to open the same instance of an application side by side. But yeah, here I can't, I can't do that. So what I'll do instead is I'll try to do VLOOKUP using two different columns on the sp same spreadsheet. So here's the function. So I want to VLOOKUP this values against that values in the column and get the results of the column beside it as, as my final result. And yeah, there you go, it works. And then once you're done, you can save this spreadsheet and share it, etc. So overall, you can work with it, but complex functions and comparing two different spreadsheets is not possible at the moment. And I still love that mouse pointer precision. Maybe the Apple Pencil will provide slightly better control, but there you go. That's how Microsoft Excel works on the iPad. For the next task, I'll slightly edge over that web development related tasks, which is to use an FTP client and upload files to my server. I found this free app, which does allow you to connect to your server via FTP. It's called FTP Manager. It's free for one server connection, but if you wish to use multiple connections, then you need to go for the paid version. It's pretty simple. You just click on the plus icon and that gives you the option to select the connection type. You can then specify the FTP host address, give it a username and password, and then save it. And that's simple. It allows you to connect to your server. So here I'm connected to my server and I can see all my files in it. Let's pick a folder. Let's pick this one called CK editor and then tap on the file to see its content. Now, again, while I'm multitasking, I can bring the files app to this side and simply drag and drop a file onto my server and it gets uploaded. It's pretty straightforward and quite easy to upload and download files from there. And thanks to the file manager app, it all makes it possible on the iPad. Next is Dropbox. We use that quite a bit for file sharing. Again, the app makes it pretty simple. Once you have created an account, you can create a folder and add files to it. You also get that share option, which will allow you to create a shareable link. And once the link is there, you can share it with your team or your clients so that they can view the files. Pretty easy and pretty straightforward. And thanks again to that well-designed app for the iPad. Next, I already showed this in a previous video. It is the TeamViewer app. See, if you still need access to your PC via your iPad, then this app allows you to do that. And you can work on your PC via your iPad. It is not as smooth and it depends on the internet connection, but in dire situations, it does come handy. Then most workplaces use apps like Slack and Skype for chatting or video conferencing. And all of these apps are available on the App Store and they are pretty well designed for the iPad or the iOS devices. I actually use Slack on my mobile phone quite a lot and I found it very convenient as compared to the PC because Slack on mobile, I can be anywhere and I can still respond to messages and take calls from my team members. And then let's look at one more final thing which we use quite a lot. It is the application called Trello. We use that for project management and task allocation and again, Thanks to iOS, there's a very well-designed app for the iPad. Let's download it. I need to sign up. And once I've done that, here's the familiar cards view. You can add a title, you can set the description, set a complete date, 
choose members, give it a colorful label, and then add attachments as well. So it's pretty neat and works well without the need of even a mouse or a keyboard. I can honestly work with this without feeling the need of my PC because this touch interface makes everything so smooth and so easy. So as you see guys, I can really manage most of the tasks with my iPad. I cannot however replace my PC as it gets tricky if I start compiling and testing code, need access to local web server or use complex functions on Excel. But for other basic tasks which cover most of the office related jobs, you can make do with the iPad. And a nicer keyboard case and the Apple Pencil will help if you're seriously considering doing that. And with the plethora of apps very well designed and optimized for the iPad, you won't be out of options or be looking for alternatives. And finally, thanks to the iPad OS, it really pushes the iPad into laptop territory. I simply cannot wait and see what Apple does with iPad OS 2. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. If so, please drop a like and comment down below to let me know. And Please be subscribed to my channel guys as I do have some really exciting new videos and new hardware to share with you very soon and I can hardly wait to get that content to you guys. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.